In this video, you're going to learn five exciting, easy ways of using a pencil. All right? It's a stupid trick. Anyway, if you are new to my channel, then hello. My name is Art John, and I'm an artist and an educator, and I've been an artist educator for years. I've worked in schools, museums, galleries, all of that, and I want to give away all my tips and tricks so that you get fantastic art lessons that are, and so here's the thing. We teach people's pencil skills, but we teach them pencil skills about writing. And that's really important to understand when it comes to drawing. For example, you know how when you give your pupils a piece of paper and you want them to do a really nice big drawing and they draw a tiny little picture in the center? Well, that's because they're using their writing technique to create their picture. And so they're restricted to small shapes and a small area because they're only using their wrist and their fingers. But artists use their shoulders, their elbows, they use their whole body to create shapes and to create lines. So in this video, I'm going to give you five activities or simple techniques that you can use to get pupils using their pencils in a different way so that when they approach a drawing activity, they've got lots of options of how to use a pencil. Always buy more pencils than you think you need because pencils are cheap and your time is not. And there's nothing worse than when you're in the middle of an art activity and you're trying to say something to someone and you're when you're constantly in when you're constantly interrupted by the sound of people sharpening. So the best thing to do would be to have a box full of pre-sharpened pencils, brand new pencils, and then when they need a pencil sharpening, they just take a new pencil and put their older pencil in another box. Then when all the pencils need sharpening, you do it in one go, it's far more time efficient. You could probably give it to a pupil as a reward because they love sharpening pencils, and then you just start the cycle again. It will save you loads of time and patience and frustration, all right? Actually, and I forgot to say this before, it will stop these nightmare pencils from appearing in your classroom. Kids love them, they look like little trinkets, but they're not gonna help your pupils do a drawing. But if you do have them in your classroom, don't get rid of them, drill a little hole through them, string them up, and you've got a brilliant necklace. In fact, uh, wait a minute. I reckon I could sell that on eBay. Art John Original. Leave a comment below if you want to buy that. <laughs> Um, okay, so the first activity is the mouse grip, and we're going to use the mouse grip to support our shading skills. And the reason why I call it the mouse grip is because we're going to hold the pencil kind of like how we hold a computer mouse. So this is how we usually hold a pencil in the triangle grip, but instead you want to hold the pencil like a computer mouse. From the top down so that your index finger is at the sharp end of the pencil. Put the pencil to the paper and push down with your index finger. Use your elbow to pull back the pencil as you shade and gently lift the pressure of your index finger to make the shading lighter. My pupils often call these shading tornadoes. You can then do the reverse to go from light to dark. Or even from dark to light and light to dark again. Okay, so next up, ah, oh, 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 dear me. Okay, so next up, we have one of my favorite activities, and this activity is kind of like a starter activity, and it's called Find the Triangle. This activity is so simple, you're gonna love it. All you need to do is put a load of dots randomly on your page. Then with a ruler, join any three of these dots together to make a triangle. Keep doing this until all the dots are used and if you have any odd ones out, just add a dot or two to make it work. You will find that by overlapping the lines, you have created more triangles and the pupils love to see how many more they can sneak into their picture. Then use the previous technique to shade the triangles to make a mega pattern. Or you could use pencil crayons, paint, pastels, whatever you like to make this pattern pop. 
So there's another reason why this activity is great. Because you know how there's always a child who you've just started the activity off and straight away they finish, they've rushed it to try and get to the end and you really haven't got anything else for them to do. Well this activity is brilliant because you can use it as a starter activity before you do your main activity. So give them a couple of minutes to get the triangle started and they'll get really involved in it and then stop it. And then move on to your next activity. And that will do two things. When that pupil comes up to you having finished your activity, you can then tell them to go back and carry on finding their triangles. But it will also encourage those pupils who are being a little bit slower to speed up so that they can then go back to the starter activity and carry on with their triangles. So it's kind of like a carrot and a stick activity, but it also teaches them brilliant pencil skills. You know how pupils often draw really dark, heavy lines? A simple way of holding a pencil to get a lighter line is to move your hands further up the pencil. So if you encourage them to have their hands halfway, then their drawing will automatically be lighter. And the further up the pencil, the lighter their lines will be. You can even get them to hold it right at the end, and then you get a really super delicate line. Okay, so number three is a really great little hack. It's a way of being able to draw accurate circles using a piece of cardboard and two pencils. So to do this, you need to grab yourself any old piece of cardboard. I find that the school canteen will always have plenty left over from their food deliveries. Trim the card if you need to and draw a line across the middle. Pop both pencils through the cardboard anywhere along the line. This will determine the radius of the circle. Then put it onto the paper and turn gently. Easy as pie. Oh, and by the way, this is a great opportunity to get maths in your art lesson because if you're learning about circumference and radius and diameter, you can challenge your people to work out the different areas of the circle by drawing and measuring lines. Okay, number four, we're going to use the pencil as a painting tool. And this is particularly good if you're looking at Australian Aboriginal inspired artwork or George Surah and pointillism because it will preserve your brushes and it will help your pupils get ordered, clean dots in their image. So this couldn't be easier, just use the end of your pencil to create your dots. Have a paper towel ready so that they can clean the end of the pencil when it gets built up with too much paint and then they can just carry on. This is, there's no washing up, you just wipe your pencil clean. Okay, number five, the final activity is to make drawing more difficult. And I know that sounds really counterintuitive because we obviously want to make drawing easier for the pupils. However, if you make the drawing more challenging, it will change the way pupils understand a pencil. A perfect example of how to do this would be to try to get the pupils to make a drawing with a hand that they don't normally use. It'll be difficult, you'll get some protests, but straight away you'll see that the pupils start using their shoulder and their elbows much more because they can't rely on the dexterity of the hand that they are used to. And so we want pupils to be thinking of drawing as a whole body act because drawing is a kinetic activity. So another example, just off the top of my head, is you could get some pencils and you could sellotape them to the bottom of the chair legs and on a large sheet of paper on the floor, get them to produce a drawing by moving the whole chair. It will be clumsy, it will get noisy, but it'll be a lot of fun and it will show pupils that they need to use their whole body, not just their wrist and their fingers. So what I like to do is I like to work with the pupils to make little drawing tools that challenge the way pupils interact with the 
pencil. And for this, you can use anything that you can find in your classroom or setting. You just have experiment, just have a go. Get the pupils to think about it. They will be imaginative, they will be creative. You'll be amazed at what they can come up with. So I've got some stuff in my studio that I've just found lying around. So I want to show you some of the examples of how I might use that stuff to make some drawing tools so you can see how easy it really is. So if this video has been valuable to you, then great. In that case, could you do me a favor? Could you make sure that you like and share this video, particularly amongst your teacher friends? And if you want to be kept in the loop when I upload new videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and that little bell logo, and that way you'll get an email. So thanks a lot for sticking around. And as a reward, here are some corgis running in slow motion.